Espero tengas muy buen día. Hoy vamos a sumergirnos en el fascinante mundo de los cuentos para mejorar nuestro inglés de una manera divertida y efectiva. Descubre cómo los cuentos pueden ayudarte a expandir tu vocabulario, mejorar tu comprensión auditiva y tu pronunciación. Prepárate para una clase llena de aprendizajes. En este video vamos a ver cuatro historias diferentes. Cada historia está dividida en cinco partes. En la primera parte voy a darte unas cuantas palabras que se repiten en la historia. Es muy importante que estas palabras las tengas anotadas en tu cuaderno. En la segunda parte vamos a escuchar la historia en inglés y tratar de entender lo más que podamos la historia. En la tercera parte vamos a leer y escuchar la historia en inglés. Las palabras que anotaste en tu cuaderno de la primera parte ahora las necesitarás porque yo voy a resaltar estas palabras con color rojo en la historia. En la cuarta parte vamos a escuchar la historia en inglés con subtítulos en español. Y en la quinta parte voy a hacerte unas cuantas preguntas para poder ver si entendiste la historia. No olvides darle like y suscribirte al canal si esta clase te gustó. Sin más, empecemos. Forest. 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 Llave. Key. 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 Árbol. Tree. 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 Roble. Oak. 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 Conocimiento. Knowledge. 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 In a deep, vibrant forest filled with tall trees and winding paths lived a little squirrel named Sophia. Sophia was small and agile with brown fur and a bushy tail that swayed happily as she jumped from branch to branch. She was known for her insatiable curiosity and love for adventure. Sophia had a peaceful and happy life in the forest, but always dreamed of exploring beyond the known limits. Each day, she ventured a little farther from her home in search of new surprises and mysteries. Despite her adventurous spirit, Sophia always returned home by nightfall, where her family eagerly awaited her. One day, while exploring a part of the forest she had never visited before, Sophia came across an enormous ancient oak tree. The oak was imposing, with branches stretching towards the sky as if they wanted to touch the clouds. Sophia stopped to admire the tree, feeling a strange fascination for its size and majesty. As she approached the oak, Sophia noticed something shiny on the ground near the roots. On closer inspection, she discovered it was a golden key, decorated with intricate engravings. The key looked ancient and was covered in dirt and leaves. Sophia wondered what such a beautiful key might open. Driven by curiosity, Sophia decided to investigate further. She climbed the oak tree with agility, searching for a place where the key might fit. As she climbed the trunk, she heard a whisper in the wind, as if the oak was trying to tell her something. Sophia paused and listened but couldn't understand what the wind was saying. Reaching one of the highest branches, Sophia found a small hidden door in the trunk of the oak. The door was old and covered with moss and vines. With her heart pounding with excitement, Sophia took out the golden key and tried it in the lock. The key fit perfectly and with a click, the door slowly opened. Inside, Sophia found a secret room illuminated by a soft golden light. The room was filled with shelves stocked with ancient books, maps, and various artifacts. There was also a table with a large open book on it. Sophia approached the book and saw it was filled with drawings and ancient texts about the forest and its secrets. As she read the pages of the book, Sophia discovered that the oak was a guardian of ancient knowledge about the forest. The book spoke of the forest's history, the secrets of the animals, and legends from times past. Sophia was amazed by everything she was learning and realized she had found something truly special. After exploring the room and learning all she could, Sophia decided to return home. She knew she needed to share what she had found with her family and friends in the forest. 
She went back to the oak and carefully closed the door, making sure everything was in its place. When she arrived home, Sophia gathered her family and friends and told them about her incredible adventure. She showed them the golden key and spoke of the book and the secrets of the oak. Everyone was amazed and excited about what Sophia had discovered. Together, they decided to make the oak a special place for all the forest inhabitants. They built a small library near the oak where everyone could come to learn about the forest and its secrets. Sophia became the guide of the library, sharing her knowledge with others and ensuring that the forest's story remained alive. Sophia's adventure and the discovery of the great oak became a legend in the forest. Animals came from far and wide to hear the stories and learn from the wisdom of the book. Sophia continued to explore and discover new mysteries, but she always returned home to the forest where her family and friends awaited her with love and admiration. And so, the great oak and the golden key became symbols of adventure and knowledge, reminding everyone that true wealth lies in sharing and learning together. In a deep, vibrant forest filled with tall trees and winding paths, lived a little squirrel named Sophia. Sophia was small and agile with brown fur and a bushy tail that swayed happily as she jumped from branch to branch. She was known for her insatiable curiosity and love for adventure. Sophia had a peaceful and happy life in the forest, but always dreamed of exploring beyond the known limits. Each day, she ventured a little farther from her home in search of new surprises and mysteries. Despite her adventurous spirit, Sophia always returned home by nightfall, where her family eagerly awaited her. One day, while exploring a part of the forest she had never visited before, Sophia came across an enormous ancient oak tree. The oak was imposing, with branches stretching towards the sky as if they wanted to touch the clouds. Sophia stopped to admire the tree, feeling a strange fascination for its size and majesty. As she approached the oak, Sophia noticed something shiny on the ground near the roots. On closer inspection, she discovered it was a golden key, decorated with intricate engravings. The key looked ancient and was covered in dirt and leaves. Sophia wondered what such a beautiful key might open. Driven by curiosity, Sophia decided to investigate further. She climbed the oak tree with agility searching for a place where the key might fit. As she climbed the trunk, she heard a whisper in the wind, as if the oak was trying to tell her something. Sophia paused and listened but couldn't understand what the wind was saying. Reaching one of the highest branches, Sophia found a small hidden door in the trunk of the oak. The door was old and covered with moss and vines. With her heart pounding with excitement, Sophia took out the golden key and tried it in the lock. The key fit perfectly, and with a click, the door slowly opened. Inside, Sophia found a secret room illuminated by a soft golden light. The room was filled with shelves, stocked with ancient books, maps, and various artifacts. There was also a table with a large open book on it. Sophia approached the book and saw it was filled with drawings and ancient texts about the forest and its secrets. As she read the pages of the book, Sophia discovered that the oak was a guardian of ancient knowledge about the forest. The book spoke of the forest's history, the secrets of the animals, and legends from times past. Sophia was amazed by everything she was learning and realized she had found something truly special. After exploring the room and learning all she could, Sophia decided to return home. She knew she needed to share what she had found with her family and friends in the forest. She went back to the oak and carefully closed the door, making sure everything was in its place. When she arrived home, Sophia gathered her family and friends and told them about her incredible adventure. She showed them the golden key and spoke of the book and the secrets of the oak. Everyone was amazed and excited about what Sophia had discovered. 
Together, they decided to make the oak a special place for all the forest inhabitants. They built a small library near the oak where everyone could come to learn about the forest and its secrets. Sophia became the guide of the library, sharing her knowledge with others and ensuring that the forest's story remained alive. Sophia's adventure and the discovery of the great oak became a legend in the forest. Animals came from far and wide to hear the stories and learn from the wisdom of the book. Sophia continued to explore and discover new mysteries, but she always returned home to the forest where her family and friends awaited her with love and admiration. And so, the great oak and the golden key became symbols of adventure and knowledge, reminding everyone that true wealth lies in sharing and learning together. In a deep, vibrant forest filled with tall trees and winding paths lived a little squirrel named Sophia. Sophia was small and agile with brown fur and a bushy tail that swayed happily as she jumped from branch to branch. She was known for her insatiable curiosity and love for adventure. Sophia had a peaceful and happy life in the forest but always dreamed of exploring beyond the known limits. Each day, she ventured a little farther from her home in search of new surprises and mysteries. Despite her adventurous spirit, Sophia always returned home by nightfall, where her family eagerly awaited her. One day, while exploring a part of the forest she had never visited before, Sophia came across an enormous ancient oak tree. The oak was imposing, with branches stretching towards the sky as if they wanted to touch the clouds. Sophia stopped to admire the tree, feeling a strange fascination for its size and majesty. As she approached the oak, Sophia noticed something shiny on the ground near the roots. On closer inspection, she discovered it was a golden key, decorated with intricate engravings. The key looked ancient and was covered in dirt and leaves. Sophia wondered what such a beautiful key might open. Driven by curiosity, Sophia decided to investigate further. She climbed the oak tree with agility, searching for a place where the key might fit. As she climbed the trunk, she heard a whisper in the wind, as if the oak was trying to tell her something. Sophia paused and listened but couldn't understand what the wind was saying. Reaching one of the highest branches, Sophia found a small hidden door in the trunk of the oak. The door was old and covered with moss and vines. With her heart pounding with excitement, Sophia took out the golden key and tried it in the lock. The key fit perfectly, and with a click, the door slowly opened. Inside, Sophia found a secret room illuminated by a soft golden light. The room was filled with shelves stocked with ancient books, maps, and various artifacts. There was also a table with a large open book on it. Sophia approached the book and saw it was filled with drawings and ancient texts about the forest and its secrets. As she read the pages of the book, Sophia discovered that the oak was a guardian of ancient knowledge about the forest. The book spoke of the forest's history, the secrets of the animals, and legends from times past. Sophia was amazed by everything she was learning and realized she had found something truly special. After exploring the room and learning all she could, Sophia decided to return home. She knew she needed to share what she had found with her family and friends in the forest. She went back to the oak and carefully closed the door, making sure everything was in its place. When she arrived home, Sophia gathered her family and friends and told them about her incredible adventure. She showed them the golden key and spoke of the book and the secrets of the oak. Everyone was amazed and excited about what Sophia had discovered. Together, they decided to make the oak a special place for all the forest inhabitants. They built a small library near the oak where everyone could come to learn about the forest and its secrets. Sophia became the guide of the library, sharing her knowledge with others and ensuring that the forest's story remained alive. 
Sophia's adventure and the discovery of the great oak became a legend in the forest. Animals came from far and wide to hear the stories and learn from the wisdom of the book. Sophia continued to explore and discover new mysteries, but she always returned home to the forest where her family and friends awaited her with love and admiration. And so, the great oak and the golden key became symbols of adventure and knowledge, reminding everyone that true wealth lies in sharing and learning together. What did Sophia find near the roots of the oak tree? A. A silver coin. B. A golden key. C. A magic wand. Two. What was inside the secret room in the oak tree? A. A treasure chest filled with gold. B. Shelves with ancient books, maps, and artifacts. C. A family of squirrels. Three. What did Sophia and her friends decide to build near the oak tree? A. A playground. B. A small library. C. A picnic area. Savannah. 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 Giraffe. 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 Arbol. Tree. 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 Bosque. Forest. 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 Animales. Animals. 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 Sabiduría. Wisdom. Wisdom. In the heart of the vast African savanna, where the sky meets the land on an endless horizon, lived a giraffe named Lila. Lila was known for her elegant long neck and her coat of brown and beige spots. She was a curious and kind giraffe, always willing to help other animals in the forest. Lila enjoyed strolling through the savanna, admiring the majestic trees and listening to the birds' songs. Although her life was peaceful, she often dreamed of finding something truly special in the forest. She had heard legends about a magical tree that, it was said, had golden leaves and offered wisdom and prosperity to those who found it. One day, while exploring a part of the forest she had never visited before, Lila came across an old elephant named Babu. Babu was a wise elder known for his stories and knowledge about the savanna. Lila approached him with a smile and asked if he knew anything about the legendary golden tree. Babu looked at Lila with his wise eyes and nodded slowly. I have heard of that tree, said Babu. It is said to be deep in the forest, where sunlight barely reaches. It is a mysterious place and hard to find, but those with a pure heart and the courage to seek it out may find it. Lila felt excited upon hearing the story and decided she wanted to embark on the search for the golden tree. Babu gave her some useful advice and wished her luck on her adventure. With gratitude, Lila set off into the deep forest. As Lila advanced in her search, she encountered various challenges. She faced rushing rivers, crossed slippery terrain, and navigated natural traps. In each challenge, Lila used her ingenuity and strength to overcome obstacles, always remembering Babu's words about keeping a pure heart and courage. One day, while exploring a particularly dense area of the forest, Lila came across a group of animals in trouble. Some small creatures were trapped in a snare and could not free themselves. Without hesitation, Lila used her long neck to reach the trap and help free the animals. 
The grateful animals told her they had seen golden flashes in a nearby part of the forest. Lila followed the animals' directions and headed in that direction. Eventually, she arrived at a hidden clearing where sunlight gently filtered through the leaves. There, in the center of the clearing, stood the legendary golden tree. Its leaves were a brilliant golden color and emitted a warm and welcoming light. Lila approached the tree with respect and admiration. As she touched its golden leaves, she felt a surge of wisdom and peace. The tree seemed to communicate with her through its soft whispers, sharing ancient secrets about the savanna and life itself. Lila realized that the true value of the tree was not just in its beauty, but in the knowledge and wisdom it offered. With a heart full of gratitude, Lila spent time in the clearing, learning and meditating. She then decided to return to her home in the savanna. Upon her return, she shared her experience with Babu and the animals of the savanna. She spoke of the golden tree and the knowledge she had gained. The savanna was filled with joy upon hearing Lila's stories. The golden tree became a living legend in the forest, and animals came from far and wide to learn from the wisdom Lila had shared. Although Lila never saw the golden tree again, she always carried with her the lessons and peace it had given her. Lila continued to live in the savanna, using her wisdom to help others and maintain balance in her home. Her quest for the golden tree had taught her that true value lies in sharing and in the kindness one offers to others. The story of Lila and the golden tree became a legend that inspired generations of animals in the savanna. In the heart of the vast African savanna, where the sky meets the land on an endless horizon, lived a giraffe named Lila. Lila was known for her elegant long neck and her coat of brown and beige spots. She was a curious and kind giraffe, always willing to help other animals in the forest. Lila enjoyed strolling through the savanna, admiring the majestic trees and listening to the birds' songs. Although her life was peaceful, she often dreamed of finding something truly special in the forest. She had heard legends about a magical tree that, it was said, had golden leaves and offered wisdom and prosperity to those who found it. One day, while exploring a part of the forest she had never visited before, Lila came across an old elephant named Babu. Babu was a wise elder known for his stories and knowledge about the savanna. Lila approached him with a smile and asked if he knew anything about the legendary golden tree. Babu looked at Lila with his wise eyes and nodded slowly. I have heard of that tree, said Babu. It is said to be deep in the forest, where sunlight barely reaches. It is a mysterious place and hard to find, but those with a pure heart and the courage to seek it out may find it. Lila felt excited upon hearing the story and decided she wanted to embark on the search for the golden tree. Babu gave her some useful advice and wished her luck on her adventure. With gratitude, Lila set off into the deep forest. As Lila advanced in her search, she encountered various challenges. She faced rushing rivers, crossed slippery terrain, and navigated natural traps. In each challenge, Lila used her ingenuity and strength to overcome obstacles, always remembering Babu's words about keeping a pure heart and courage. One day, while exploring a particularly dense area of the forest, Lila came across a group of animals in trouble. Some small creatures were trapped in a snare and could not free themselves. Without hesitation, Lila used her long neck to reach the trap and help free the animals. The grateful animals told her they had seen golden flashes in a nearby part of the forest. Lila followed the animals' directions and headed in that direction. Eventually, she arrived at a hidden clearing where sunlight gently filtered through the leaves. There, in the center of the clearing, stood the legendary golden tree. 
Its leaves were a brilliant golden color and emitted a warm and welcoming light. Lila approached the tree with respect and admiration. As she touched its golden leaves, she felt a surge of wisdom and peace. The tree seemed to communicate with her through its soft whispers, sharing ancient secrets about the savanna and life itself. Lila realized that the true value of the tree was not just in its beauty, but in the knowledge and wisdom it offered. With a heart full of gratitude, Lila spent time in the clearing, learning and meditating. She then decided to return to her home in the savanna. Upon her return, she shared her experience with Babu and the animals of the savanna. She spoke of the golden tree and the knowledge she had gained. The savanna was filled with joy upon hearing Lila's stories. The golden tree became a living legend in the forest, and animals came from far and wide to learn from the wisdom Lila had shared. Although Lila never saw the golden tree again, she always carried with her the lessons and peace it had given her. Lila continued to live in the savanna, using her wisdom to help others and maintain balance in her home. Her quest for the golden tree had taught her that true value lies in sharing and in the kindness one offers to others. The story of Lila and the golden tree became a legend that inspired generations of animals in the savanna. In the heart of the vast African savanna, where the sky meets the land on an endless horizon, lived a giraffe named Lila. Lila was known for her elegant long neck and her coat of brown and beige spots. She was a curious and kind giraffe, always willing to help other animals in the forest. Lila enjoyed strolling through the savanna, admiring the majestic trees and listening to the birds' songs. Although her life was peaceful, she often dreamed of finding something truly special in the forest. She had heard legends about a magical tree that, it was said, had golden leaves and offered wisdom and prosperity to those who found it. One day, while exploring a part of the forest she had never visited before, Lila came across an old elephant named Babu. Babu was a wise elder known for his stories and knowledge about the savanna. Lila approached him with a smile and asked if he knew anything about the legendary golden tree. Babu looked at Lila with his wise eyes and nodded slowly. I have heard of that tree, said Babu. It is said to be deep in the forest, where sunlight barely reaches. It is a mysterious place and hard to find, but those with a pure heart and the courage to seek it out may find it. Lila felt excited upon hearing the story and decided she wanted to embark on the search for the golden tree. Babu gave her some useful advice and wished her luck on her adventure. With gratitude, Lila set off into the deep forest. As Lila advanced in her search, she encountered various challenges. She faced rushing rivers, crossed slippery terrain, and navigated natural traps. In each challenge, Lila used her ingenuity and strength to overcome obstacles, always remembering Babu's words about keeping a pure heart and courage. One day, while exploring a particularly dense area of the forest, Lila came across a group of animals in trouble. Some small creatures were trapped in a snare and could not free themselves. Without hesitation, Lila used her long neck to reach the trap and help free the animals. The grateful animals told her they had seen golden flashes in a nearby part of the forest. Lila followed the animals' directions and headed in that direction. Eventually, she arrived at a hidden clearing where sunlight gently filtered through the leaves. There, in the center of the clearing, stood the legendary golden tree. Its leaves were a brilliant golden color and emitted a warm and welcoming light. Lila approached the tree with respect and admiration. As she touched its golden leaves, she felt a surge of wisdom and peace. The tree seemed to communicate with her through its soft whispers, sharing ancient secrets about the savanna and life itself. 
Lila realized that the true value of the tree was not just in its beauty, but in the knowledge and wisdom it offered. With a heart full of gratitude, Lila spent time in the clearing, learning and meditating. She then decided to return to her home in the savanna. Upon her return, she shared her experience with Babu and the animals of the savanna. She spoke of the golden tree and the knowledge she had gained. The savanna was filled with joy upon hearing Lila's stories. The golden tree became a living legend in the forest, and animals came from far and wide to learn from the wisdom Lila had shared. Although Lila never saw the golden tree again, she always carried with her the lessons and peace it had given her. Lila continued to live in the savanna, using her wisdom to help others and maintain balance in her home. Her quest for the golden tree had taught her that true value lies in sharing and in the kindness one offers to others. The story of Lila and the golden tree became a legend that inspired generations of animals in the savanna. What was Lila known for? A. Her blue eyes. B. Her elegant long neck. C. Her fast running speed. Two. What did Lila find in the hidden clearing? A. A magic pond. B. The legendary golden tree. C. A hidden treasure. Three. What did the golden tree offer? A. Eternal youth. B. Wealth and gold. C. Wisdom and prosperity. Cajera. Race. 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 Caballo. Horse. 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 Pista. Track. 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 Jinete. Rider. 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 Velocidad. Speed. 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 Meta. Finish. 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 In a vast plain surrounded by rolling hills and green fields lived a racing horse named Galan. Galan was known throughout the region for his speed and elegance in races. His sleek black coat and powerful legs made him stand out on any track. Since he was a colt, Galan had dreamed of winning the famous Dawn Race, an event held every year at sunrise. The Dawn Race was legendary in the region, attracting the best horses and riders from all corners of the country. It was said that the winner of the race would receive a laurel crown and the title of the Dawn Racer. For Galan, this race represented not just a trophy, but the chance to showcase his dedication and effort. From a young age, Galan had trained tirelessly. His mornings began with long trots across the plain, and his afternoons were filled with workouts on the track. His rider, a young and experienced jockey named Rodrigo, shared Galan's dream and worked with him every step of the way. The bond between Galan and Rodrigo was deep. They understood each other without the need for words. The day of the dawn race finally arrived. Preparations at the race field were in full swing. The stands were filled with enthusiastic spectators eagerly awaiting the start of the competition. The sun began to peek over the horizon, painting the sky with golden and pink hues. The atmosphere was charged with excitement and anticipation. Galan and Rodrigo lined up alongside the other competitors, all ready for the big race. The horses were restless, 
and the riders adjusted their saddles and stretched their muscles. The sound of hooves against the ground and the buzz of the crowd filled the air. The starting gun fired, and the race began. Galan surged forward with impressive speed, his legs moving in perfect harmony with his breathing rhythm. Rodrigo stayed in sync with every move of Galan, guiding him precisely along the track. The race was tough, and the competitors were formidable. Galan faced steep hills and tight turns, but never lost his momentum. Each obstacle only strengthened his determination. As he advanced, the spectators cheered and roared, their enthusiasm creating a deafening roar. When just over half the race remained, Galan began to feel the weight of fatigue. His legs ached and his breath grew heavier. Rodrigo, recognizing the difficulty, whispered words of encouragement and urged him to keep going. You can do it, Galan. Remember why you're here. With renewed energy, Galan found the final push he needed. The finish line came into view, and the end was within reach. With fierce determination, Galan increased his speed, overtaking competitors who were beside him. The race turned into a battle between endurance and speed, and Galan was determined to win. Finally, the horizon glowed with the first light of the sun. Galan crossed the finish line with a triumphant leap, closely followed by his rivals. The crowd erupted in cheers as Galan and Rodrigo came to a stop, panting but victorious. The award ceremony began, and Galan was crowned as the Dawn Racer. The laurel crown was placed on his head, and the crowd cheered for his achievement. Rodrigo stood beside him, proud and excited by his loyal companion's success. That night, as the sun set and the plane quieted down, Galan lay in his stable, feeling content. He had achieved his dream and demonstrated his ability and dedication. The dawn race had been more than just a competition. It had been a testament to his strength and passion. With the dawn of a new day, Galan knew his name would be remembered in racing history. The glory of victory and the honor of fulfilling his dream would stay with him, and his legacy would inspire future generations of racing horses. In a vast plain surrounded by rolling hills and green fields lived a racing horse named Galan. Galan was known throughout the region for his speed and elegance in races. His sleek black coat and powerful legs made him stand out on any track. Since he was a colt, Galan had dreamed of winning the famous Dawn Race, an event held every year at sunrise. The Dawn Race was legendary in the region, attracting the best horses and riders from all corners of the country. It was said that the winner of the race would receive a laurel crown and the title of the Dawn Racer. For Galan, this race represented not just a trophy, but the chance to showcase his dedication and effort. From a young age, Galan had trained tirelessly. His mornings began with long trots across the plain, and his afternoons were filled with workouts on the track. His rider, a young and experienced jockey named Rodrigo, shared Galan's dream and worked with him every step of the way. The bond between Galan and Rodrigo was deep. They understood each other without the need for words. The day of the dawn race finally arrived. Preparations at the race field were in full swing. The stands were filled with enthusiastic spectators eagerly awaiting the start of the competition. The sun began to peek over the horizon, painting the sky with golden and pink hues. The atmosphere was charged with excitement and anticipation. Galan and Rodrigo lined up alongside the other competitors, all ready for the big race. The horses were restless, and the riders adjusted their saddles and stretched their muscles. The sound of hooves against the ground and the buzz of the crowd filled the air. The starting gun fired, and the race began. 
Galan surged forward with impressive speed, his legs moving in perfect harmony with his breathing rhythm. Rodrigo stayed in sync with every move of Galan, guiding him precisely along the track. The race was tough, and the competitors were formidable. Galan faced steep hills and tight turns, but never lost his momentum. Each obstacle only strengthened his determination. As he advanced, the spectators cheered and roared, their enthusiasm creating a deafening roar. When just over half the race remained, Galan began to feel the weight of fatigue. His legs ached and his breath grew heavier. Rodrigo, recognizing the difficulty, whispered words of encouragement and urged him to keep going. You can do it, Galan. Remember why you're here. With renewed energy, Galan found the final push he needed. The finish line came into view, and the end was within reach. With fierce determination, Galan increased his speed, overtaking competitors who were beside him. The race turned into a battle between endurance and speed, and Galan was determined to win. Finally, the horizon glowed with the first light of the sun. Galan crossed the finish line with a triumphant leap, closely followed by his rivals. The crowd erupted in cheers as Galan and Rodrigo came to a stop, panting but victorious. The award ceremony began, and Galan was crowned as the Dawn Racer. The laurel crown was placed on his head, and the crowd cheered for his achievement. Rodrigo stood beside him, proud and excited by his loyal companion's success. That night, as the sun set and the plane quieted down, Galan lay in his stable, feeling content. He had achieved his dream and demonstrated his ability and dedication. The Dawn Race had been more than just a competition. It had been a testament to his strength and passion. With the dawn of a new day, Galan knew his name would be remembered in racing history. The glory of victory and the honor of fulfilling his dream would stay with him, and his legacy would inspire future generations of racing horses. In a vast plain surrounded by rolling hills and green fields lived a racing horse named Galan. Galan was known throughout the region for his speed and elegance in races. His sleek black coat and powerful legs made him stand out on any track. Since he was a colt, Galan had dreamed of winning the famous Dawn Race, an event held every year at sunrise. The Dawn Race was legendary in the region attracting the best horses and riders from all corners of the country. It was said that the winner of the race would receive a laurel crown and the title of the Dawn Racer. For Galan, this race represented not just a trophy, but the chance to showcase his dedication and effort. From a young age, Galan had trained tirelessly. His mornings began with long trots across the plain and his afternoons were filled with workouts on the track. His rider, a young and experienced jockey named Rodrigo, shared Galan's dream and worked with him every step of the way. The bond between Galan and Rodrigo was deep. They understood each other without the need for words. The day of the dawn race finally arrived. Preparations at the race field were in full swing. The stands were filled with enthusiastic spectators eagerly awaiting the start of the competition. The sun began to peek over the horizon, painting the sky with golden and pink hues. The atmosphere was charged with excitement and anticipation. Galan and Rodrigo lined up alongside the other competitors, all ready for the big race. The horses were restless and the riders adjusted their saddles and stretched their muscles. The sound of hooves against the ground and the buzz of the crowd filled the air. The starting gun fired and the race began. Galan surged forward with impressive speed, his legs moving in perfect harmony with his breathing rhythm. 
Rodrigo stayed in sync with every move of Galan, guiding him precisely along the track. The race was tough, and the competitors were formidable. Galan faced steep hills and tight turns, but never lost his momentum. Each obstacle only strengthened his determination. As he advanced, the spectators cheered and roared, their enthusiasm creating a deafening roar. When just over half the race remained, Galan began to feel the weight of fatigue. His legs ached and his breath grew heavier. Rodrigo, recognizing the difficulty, whispered words of encouragement and urged him to keep going. You can do it, Galan. Remember why you're here. With renewed energy, Galan found the final push he needed. The finish line came into view, and the end was within reach. With fierce determination, Galan increased his speed, overtaking competitors who were beside him. The race turned into a battle between endurance and speed, and Galan was determined to win. Finally, the horizon glowed with the first light of the sun. Galan crossed the finish line with a triumphant leap, closely followed by his rivals. The crowd erupted in cheers as Galan and Rodrigo came to a stop, panting but victorious. The award ceremony began, and Galan was crowned as the Dawn Racer. The laurel crown was placed on his head, and the crowd cheered for his achievement. Rodrigo stood beside him, proud and excited by his loyal companion's success. That night, as the sun set and the plane quieted down, Galan lay in his stable, feeling content. He had achieved his dream and demonstrated his ability and dedication. The Dawn Race had been more than just a competition. It had been a testament to his strength and passion. With the dawn of a new day, Galan knew his name would be remembered in racing history. The glory of victory and the honor of fulfilling his dream would stay with him, and his legacy would inspire future generations of racing horses. What was the name of the famous race Galan wanted to win? A. The Night Race B. The Dawn Race C. The Sunset Race <coughs> 2. Who was Galan's rider? A. Antonio B. Rodrigo C. Carlos Three, what did Galan receive for winning the race? A, a golden saddle. B, a laurel crown and the title of the Dawn Racer. C, a silver trophy. Savannah. 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 Cachorros. Cubs. 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 Familia. Family. 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 Hogar. Home. Home. Tormenta. Storm. 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 Paisaje. Landscape. In the vast African savanna, beneath the endless sky and the heat of the sun, lived a majestic pride of lions. The leader of the pride was a mighty lion named Mufasa, known for his courage and wisdom. Alongside him were his lioness companion, Nala, and their three cubs, Simba, Nia, and Tano. The family lived in a large plain that stretched as far as the eye could see, surrounded by acacias and baobabs. Life on the savanna was not easy, but Mufasa and Nala had created a safe home for their cubs. 
Mufasa taught his children about the kingdom they ruled and passed down the traditions and respect for the land. Each morning, he and his cubs would go out together to explore the savanna, with Mufasa telling them stories about their ancestors and the ancient traditions of lions. Simba, the eldest son, was curious and brave, always eager to venture beyond known boundaries. Nia, the second in line, was wise and observant, with a great ability to understand the animals of the forest. Tano, the youngest, was playful and mischievous, always looking for new ways to have fun. One day, while Mufasa and his cubs were on one of their excursions, a great storm swept over the savanna. Dark clouds covered the sky, and the winds began to howl. Mufasa, concerned for his family's safety, led his cubs to a nearby cave he had discovered during one of his explorations. The storm lasted through the night, with the roar of the wind and rain deafening. Inside the cave, Mufasa kept his cubs close, telling them stories to calm them. Nala, who had gone out to find food before the storm, quickly returned to the shelter to be with her family. As the storm faded, the family emerged from the cave and found that the savanna had changed. Rivers had overflowed, and the familiar landscape was covered in mud and debris. Mufasa and Nala were worried about the state of their home and territory. Simba, seeing the devastation, was disheartened. He couldn't understand how the beauty of his home could have changed so quickly. Nia, with her wisdom, reminded Simba that the savanna always recovers and that even in the midst of destruction, there were opportunities to learn and grow. Tano, though small, tried to cheer up his siblings with games and laughter. Mufasa, seeing the determination and spirit of his cubs, decided it was time to teach them an important lesson. He guided them through the devastated landscape, showing them how life on the savanna adapted to changes and how nature always found a way to heal. He explained that while storms and challenges were inevitable, the strength and unity of the family were what truly mattered. The family spent the following weeks working together to restore their home. Mufasa and Nala led the rebuilding of their territory, while Simba, Nia, and Tano helped relocate animals that had been displaced by the storm. Together, they made their home once again the safe and beautiful place it had always been. Over time, the savanna regained its splendor, and the pride of lions thrived once more. Mufasa and Nala felt proud of their cubs, who had learned the importance of resilience and teamwork. The storm became a valuable lesson for the family, reminding them that while challenges may be great, love and unity always prevail. And so the Lion family lived happily in their restored home, strengthened by the experience and united by the bonds of their love and loyalty. In the vast African savanna, Beneath the endless sky and the heat of the sun lived a majestic pride of lions. The leader of the pride was a mighty lion named Mufasa, known for his courage and wisdom. Alongside him were his lioness companion, Nala, and their three cubs, Simba, Nia, and Tano. The family lived in a large plain that stretched as far as the eye could see, surrounded by acacias and baobabs. Life on the savanna was not easy, but Mufasa and Nala had created a safe home for their cubs. Mufasa taught his children about the kingdom they ruled and passed down the traditions and respect for the land. Each morning, he and his cubs would go out together to explore the savanna, with Mufasa telling them stories about their ancestors and the ancient traditions of lions. Simba, the eldest son, was curious and brave, always eager to venture beyond known boundaries. Nia, the second in line, was wise and observant, with a great ability to understand the animals of the forest. Tano, the youngest, 
was playful and mischievous, always looking for new ways to have fun. One day, while Mufasa and his cubs were on one of their excursions, a great storm swept over the savanna. Dark clouds covered the sky, and the winds began to howl. Mufasa, concerned for his family's safety, led his cubs to a nearby cave he had discovered during one of his explorations. The storm lasted through the night, with the roar of the wind and rain deafening. Inside the cave, Mufasa kept his cubs close, telling them stories to calm them. Nala, who had gone out to find food before the storm, quickly returned to the shelter to be with her family. As the storm faded, the family emerged from the cave and found that the savanna had changed. Rivers had overflowed, and the familiar landscape was covered in mud and debris. Mufasa and Nala were worried about the state of their home and territory. Simba, seeing the devastation, was disheartened. He couldn't understand how the beauty of his home could have changed so quickly. Nia, with her wisdom, reminded Simba that the savanna always recovers and that even in the midst of destruction, there were opportunities to learn and grow. Tano, though small, tried to cheer up his siblings with games and laughter. Mufasa, seeing the determination and spirit of his cubs, decided it was time to teach them an important lesson. He guided them through the devastated landscape, showing them how life on the savanna adapted to changes and how nature always found a way to heal. He explained that while storms and challenges were inevitable, the strength and unity of the family were what truly mattered. The family spent the following weeks working together to restore their home. Mufasa and Nala led the rebuilding of their territory, while Simba, Nia, and Tano helped relocate animals that had been displaced by the storm. Together, they made their home once again the safe and beautiful place it had always been. Over time, the savanna regained its splendor, and the pride of lions thrived once more. Mufasa and Nala felt proud of their cubs, who had learned the importance of resilience and teamwork. The storm became a valuable lesson for the family, reminding them that while challenges may be great, love and unity always prevail. And so the Lion family lived happily in their restored home, strengthened by the experience and united by the bonds of their love and loyalty. In the vast African savanna, beneath the endless sky and the heat of the sun, lived a majestic pride of lions. The leader of the pride was a mighty lion named Mufasa, known for his courage and wisdom. Alongside him were his lioness companion, Nala, and their three cubs, Simba, Nia, and Tano. The family lived in a large plain that stretched as far as the eye could see, surrounded by acacias and baobabs. Life on the savanna was not easy, but Mufasa and Nala had created a safe home for their cubs. Mufasa taught his children about the kingdom they ruled and passed down the traditions and respect for the land. Each morning, he and his cubs would go out together to explore the savanna, with Mufasa telling them stories about their ancestors and the ancient traditions of lions. Simba, the eldest son, was curious and brave, always eager to venture beyond known boundaries. Nia, the second in line, was wise and observant, with a great ability to understand the animals of the forest. Tano, the youngest, was playful and mischievous, always looking for new ways to have fun. One day, while Mufasa and his cubs were on one of their excursions, a great storm swept over the savanna. Dark clouds covered the sky, and the winds began to howl. Mufasa, concerned for his family's safety, led his cubs to a nearby cave he had discovered during one of his explorations. The storm lasted through the night, with the roar of the wind and rain deafening. Inside the cave, 
Mufasa kept his cubs close, telling them stories to calm them. Nala, who had gone out to find food before the storm, quickly returned to the shelter to be with her family. As the storm faded, the family emerged from the cave and found that the savanna had changed. Rivers had overflowed, and the familiar landscape was covered in mud and debris. Mufasa and Nala were worried about the state of their home and territory. Simba, seeing the devastation, was disheartened. He couldn't understand how the beauty of his home could have changed so quickly. Nia, with her wisdom, reminded Simba that the savanna always recovers and that even in the midst of destruction, there were opportunities to learn and grow. Tano, though small, tried to cheer up his siblings with games and laughter. Mufasa, seeing the determination and spirit of his cubs, decided it was time to teach them an important lesson. He guided them through the devastated landscape, showing them how life on the savanna adapted to changes and how nature always found a way to heal. He explained that while storms and challenges were inevitable, the strength and unity of the family were what truly mattered. The family spent the following weeks working together to restore their home. Mufasa and Nala led the rebuilding of their territory, while Simba, Nia, and Tano helped relocate animals that had been displaced by the storm. Together, they made their home once again the safe and beautiful place it had always been. Over time, the savanna regained its splendor, and the pride of lions thrived once more. Mufasa and Nala felt proud of their cubs, who had learned the importance of resilience and teamwork. The storm became a valuable lesson for the family, reminding them that while challenges may be great, love and unity always prevail. And so the Lion family lived happily in their restored home, strengthened by the experience and united by the bonds of their love and loyalty. What did Mufasa teach his cubs about? A. How to swim in the river. B. How to fly. C. The kingdom they ruled. Two, what happened to the savanna after the storm? A, it turned into a desert. B, it caught on fire. C, it was covered in mud and debris. Three, what lesson did Mufasa teach his cubs after the storm? A, how to hunt for food. O, B. The importance of resilience and teamwork. C. How to climb trees. Espero de verdad que de todo corazón que esta clase de una hora te haya gustado. Si es así, te tengo una sorpresa. Debajo de este video te dejaré una clase totalmente gratuita para que puedas aprender inglés. Esto es un regalo para todos los que se quedaron hasta el final. Sé que son muy pocos los que se quedaron y este es un regalo para todos ustedes. El link para que puedas entrar a la clase lo encontrarás en la descripción de este video o en el comentario fijado. Si quieres seguir aprendiendo inglés te aconsejo que mires este video.